We have still got a brilliant talk I'd like to think because we've got a few guys here that have took on the knowledge this year. They've read the Black's Law Dictionary, they've studied their Consumer Credit Acts. Um, they're not as beautiful or as erudite as <laughs> but, but Bill's near. Bill's close. Um, so as I said, I'm gonna welcome Roger. I don't know if Bill's gonna do a bit of talking. No, no. Um, I'm gonna welcome Roger, who can cope with it easily. Um, we're gonna try and give you a bit of an introduction to Freeman and then Roger's gonna pretty well take it on from here because I only give him 45 minutes to do the talk. So let's give a bit simply uh, this is Roger. And he's a freak. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's lovely to be with you again. I can't believe how many people are in this room. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, sorry that you haven't got the talk that you were due to have this evening. Um, because it happened, sort of, as Andy said, about 45 minutes ago, I've had to put a lot together. He's given me a sort of framework of things he wants me to go over, which are very relevant. It's not surprising that he's come up with things that are very relevant to him. And what I'm going to take you through first is who you really are. Got that? Not who you think you are, who you really are. So let's start at the very beginning. Once upon a time, you were born. And the first piece of paper that ever came into your life arrived. Your parents sent a birth certificate to the government of live birth. And they sent one back to parents, which was a certificate of birth. Okay? Nobody got any problem with that. So we've had a son or daughter, and here we are, and they sent the certificate back going, oh, there you go, we've got all that. And what happened at that moment is you were split in half. Over here, the government keep the legal title. And that legal title can be <coughs> Mr, Mrs, Miss, Doctor, Professor, Ministry of State, State for something, Judge something. It's a title. That's what you've got to know. Is over here, you have a title. And for most of us, because of plebs, is Mr, Miss, Mrs. And we have an aristocrat in the room, but I'm not going to expose who he is yet, but I'm going to show how he did it. Um, and that means you can get over this. Over here, you kept the equitable title. Now, this one, if it doesn't have that, Mr, Mrs, Miss or whatever, you're going to be called in your uppercase name. Uh, let's have John Doe, all capitals. Over here, this is who you are, your John Doe. They might think, well, that's not much of a difference, you know, so they wrote it in capital letters. Capita diminutia maxima in law <coughs> means the loss of all rights. So if you own up to being this when you're going to court, guess how many rights you've got? Yeah. Correct. And note that when you're asked to join the electoral register, you know, you get that thing through the post, don't lose your right to vote. <laughs> what rights do you lose when you keep the right to vote? all others. You have basically said, I'm going to let this person talk for me. This MP is going to do all my talking for me and I'm going to sign away the right to speak for myself but keep the right to involve myself in democracy. And you know what that is. <laughs> we do this once every five years. That's democracy. Want to see it again? It's really good. Isn't it? <laughs> nice to know we have an input into the system. Right, so if you don't get the mister, and your surname is in capitals, and I'll give a million pounds to anybody in the room who can get a credit card, debit card, store card out of their pocket that has got their name in anything other than capital letters. I thought that would be a challenge. <laughs> uh, no, that letter was addressed to mister. Ah, it wasn't. Go on. <laughs> Paul of the Blackbridge. Yes, but the problem is they've gone, well, that's where they're not talking to the man, but who are they actually writing to? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So they let them call you. Uh, and basically, when, when you say you're stopped by the police, when you're stopped by the police, they, they say, um, excuse me, can I, can I have your, your name, please? And I'll go, Roger Walker. Oh, that's Mr. Roger Walker, then. Yes, you've just made an oral contract, and there'll be another officer here who in, t who in court will say, yes, my colleague asked if it was Mr. Roger Walker, and he said yes. That's an oral contract. 
You're stuffed at that moment. You have no rights left at that moment and they can do what they like to you. And don't forget, the police are responsible for one in four murders in the United Kingdom. Got that one? Yeah. You're paying for them as well. That's nice, isn't it? They've got us paying for a bunch of uniform murderers. Now, let me explain. Um, it's the, being arrested by the police, being arrested by the police is the equivalent of being arrested by Group 4. They're both corporate entities. Would you expect Group 4 to have a right to start mutilating people in the high street without anybody doing anything about it? No. So why do we tolerate the police doing it? They're a corporate entity. But they only exercise if we admit being this. So the crackies ask questions, you know, uh, what's your name? Why do you want it? And the answer to that question is because I want to make a contract that you don't know about. Because they'll fill a form in up here, in capital letters, Mr. Roger Walker, and what do you do at the bottom? Sign it. The signature comes from this half, saying is that half. You're actually admitting you're being this. Now, Everybody thinks this legal title is compulsory. It isn't. You can avail yourself of it whenever you want. So, since I'm claiming benefits, guess what? I'm under my legal title between 9 and 5, and when 5 o'clock comes, I don't need it anymore, so I come back over here. And I defy anybody to prove otherwise. All statutory laws based on assumption. They assume that you're Mr. and they work on that presumption. That you are always, 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 always Mr. And if you go into a court and they lock your name in and tell you, come what's your name? I'll go Roger Walker. Oh, that's Mr. Walker. No, it isn't. And they go, no, it's been like that. It's only just the bloody years. You don't put a title down for me. I've come in here like this, not like this. When you're in a courtroom like this, you're senior to everyone in there because they're under a title. The judge, clerk, bailiff, usher, they're all titles. They're all corporate operators. They're all over here. So this is where statutory law comes in. Let's just uh, tidy this up a little bit. Let's keep the two going together. So you've got statutes over here and common law. And it exists despite what everybody else says because you can read articles of law that actually describe both in the same sentence. Well, why would describe that if it doesn't exist? The, the unfortunate thing is, after the birth certificate, this half just vanished. It left the face of the earth. And everybody thinks they are their legal title. You're not. That's not who you are. That has you called a civilian. And that's the lowest form of employment of the Crown Corporation, for which the Ministry of Justice works to prosecute its statutes. In other words, when you've got a title, there are rules and obligations under that title. And do you know who's got more titles than anybody else in the United Kingdom at the moment? Peter Mandelson. He's just awarded himself, you know, this, 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 this. Anyone read the article, by the way, in the FT today by Mandelson? It's the biggest load of bollocks out. And I phoned them up and told them so. I said, you know, can you stop this banking propaganda with these retards? It's bullshit. Uh, by the way, as the FT, why did you put Lloyd Blankfein as Man of the Year last year? He's one of the biggest criminals on the face of the earth. Do you respect that sort of thing? Mm, I, I, I cancel my registration, basically. That's very kind. Um, everybody having so far. Over here, of course, you're free. You have all, and watch this word, inalienable. Rights. Now, in the middle of this word is lean. And that's putting a levy on property or something to buy it or take ownership of it. In other words, your human rights can't be bought. They are in a lean bubble. You can't put money against them. You're free. And if you want to check that out, the international uh, what is it, International Court of Human Rights? Well, you've got it, it's one of the copies of what it's called. International Human Rights Charity? So, yeah. Get a copy of that, get a copy of that and keep it. And wave it around in court, they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, I've, got a rather, I've got a rather unique situation with this, with this title game. It's the Universal Human Rights Charity. Ah, thank you, yes. Roger, 
something for me some months back. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. That's going through. I'll show you in a bit how to actually run ahead of the game and prevent them coming to get you, rather than having to dig yourself out of holes they create for you. Um, so you're right, uh, the sovereign is the highest title. And it's the highest title because of course the sovereign has the divine right. So if you, put, if you go into your court, if you put sovereign Mm. Oh, I've got a better one than that. We've got, we've got, there's loads of ways you can get out of this. There's, there's other ways. One of the ways I do it, thanks to a very funny thing that happened to me a while ago that I gave a talk on, over here, I've obviously got a mister that they've got legal possession of, yeah. and I'm a sovereign over here. If they haven't got legal title, call yourself something that you aren't. So in this half, thanks to a certain Buddhist called Sonia Rinpoche, I am H.H. Oh, that's quite unusual. Sure. Senior... Rinpoche. And that's how I go into court. Why? Because they don't have the title. I've got the right of legal title and sovereign title and that name because it's never been registered. And I use it every time I go in. There's nothing they can do about it. But the title you really do want over here that will get you out of this situation, which an aristocrat in the room is about to do, and this is a title they absolutely hate to hear. Master. They don't want that sounding in the courtroom. Do you remember, my boys, when you were master? Yeah. How young were you then? So what happened? It was seven. Yeah. I grew a pair of balls, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> they were happening then, in a small way. Um, but uh, if, if you can get that title, you're, you're, you're in an amazing position. I mean, someone in the room who's doing that at the moment. Uh, and it means he can walk into court. There's nothing they can do about it, as that title is senior to everything else. Hello, yeah. you, you know you about your passport, don't you? Yes. In your P, in your D, in your A. Yes, yeah, of course it would be. Do people know in the room about that? About the person yeah. to the mountain aristocrat? Hang on, I'll show, I'll show the guys where to get it. This is mine. And what you want is the mud shop. Okay? It's a pity we can't turn. At the top of the name, it's very small, I can't really show the room, but that's got P above my capitalised surnames. Are all capitals? Yeah. Right, that's my title. In other words, they're saying, well, you're travelling round, you're over here. Right. Sorry. P. P. I'll start at the back. Oh, God. The P is Clem, basically. You're a member of the public, but as, as good self says, there are two other letters that can turn up there. A or D. A is aristocrat. <laughs> And D is diplomat. And I actually travelled to Malta some years ago with a, a Scottish laird who was a diplomat. Um, I was going on the father because he was going to go with my mother, but my mother sadly passed away. So we went on the plane. And because his wife had passed away, they obviously bonded quite tightly because they had something in common. The pair of them got pissed out of their minds. And I'm sitting there sort of, wow, what age was I there? I was 17, 18. Um, and uh, we had to help this poor soul off the plane. So we've, you know, we've got him under one arm, he's got his stick, and we're coming down. Because of who he is, we went through a side door into a waiting room. Our baggage joined us within five minutes. A taxi was ordered for both of us, and we left. You can take anything in and out of the country if you're an aristocrat and a diplomat, because you don't get searched, ever. And they always put diplomats and aristocrats back on the plane last. So that they're first off. So we do, we, we all send our passports back and have to put an A or a D on it. And you've got to prove it. Yeah, right. You've got to prove it. You can do it by registering your address at the post office. Well, what's, what's, if you what's, get a forwarding address at the post office, you become a diplomat because I know people have done it. You're knowing me. They've got a PO box. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, I've heard about that, but I don't know the mechanism. But I know that can be done. I must confess, I haven't gone that way because it's not really of interest to me. Sorry. It's a monarch box. I don't think you might get one, but they won't put a D on there for you just for that. That's the monarch box. No, the guy who was going to give the talk, his car has got diplomatic immunity. He's actually oh, achieved that. <laughs> no, he has, but therefore his car has. But diplomats still get the British passport, don't they? The yeah, black one. That's right. So, uh, in essence. Uh, is everybody comfortable that the first piece of paper that entered your life split you in two? 
There's a legal title which they've got ownership of. You go into court under legal title, you're dead. So you have to actually tell them that you know that you're not under that title and assure them that you're not. This is why. When you go into the courtroom, most people think, oh, that bloody hell's going on here. There's people parking about all the way down there behind bits of wood. You've got a judge up here. Or magistrates. Magistrates. Richard, on that point with the piece of paper, you say it's a contract, isn't it? Which? The birth certificate. Yes. But it's not full disclosure. That's what I was going to ask you. It's, it's so it, the contract then is void? Yes, but there's a thing in law that if you've signed it and accepted it, it can't yeah, be fraud. but you're a baby, you can't it. sign your own birth Ah, okay. Now this is the defence I tried, and I proved it. I said, hang on a minute. And they said, yeah, said no, 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 you're, you're Mr. Walker. I hear we've got a legal title. So yeah, no, 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 no. I was contracted over, not with. The parties involved were <laughs> my parents and the government. I never consented to anything. I was contracted over. Not with. It's just um, like hearsay with your birth date, isn't it? Oh, I did that in the court. I said, um, can you give us your date of birth? And I said, well, allegedly, it's the 16th of March, 1958. And the judge went, ah, give me your name, give me your name, answer the question properly. Because they do that sort of thing, because they're mad. Um, <laughs> and I said, I said to him these words, you go and get me a child that has been born today, taken its first breath, knows what language is, what a calendar is, what a clock is, and knows what it's being told. All birth dates are hearsay. Do you understand the answer to that perfect question? <laughs> so, we got them, and we've got uh, us truly over here. Uh, let's call them the public. Because if you're under a title, you're a civilian, you work for the Crown Corporation, and you're the only civilian. <coughs> over here, we'll have the Crown Prosecution Service. So that's the state versus us, and that's how we walk into court. But what they assume, because you're split in half, trust law comes into play. And they think, they think, they are the executor of that trust, executor, under that one, executor of the trust. This is the beneficiary of that trust, and guess what you are? The trustee, the lowest of the low. So the executor tells the beneficiary, tells the uh, trustee what to do for the benefit of the beneficiary, and that's all they're interested in. However, if you go in and you declare that you're a common man, they become the trustee because you can only be the trustee on its own, but you can be the executor. and the beneficiary, which of course poses a problem because all the trust parties are here. What are they doing there? They have a role, they've got no standing. All trust members are present. What are they doing here? And you have a right in law, if you can establish this, to point at this lot and say to these, you have a duty to protect me. And if you don't, you're in derogation of trust. And that is a high crime. I'm suing the head of the DWP at the moment for derogation of trust because in that particular unique instance, you are the beneficiary of the other side. You're supposed to get the money. When you receive benefits, you're the, the beneficiary. Yeah. So what does that make them? The so trustee. They're the trustee, the DWP are the trustee. So if they're not paying you, they're all in derogation of trust. So we're suing the DWP. Uh, and you always go to the top, go right to the top, and you don't sue them under their title. You bring them out from under their title and you sue them as a common man. So we've got a judge for the case on Monday, we'll be ripping him out from under his title of judge and saying, come and join us, mate, in court, because we're going to... for committing fraud in your own court. If you sign the electoral register, can you still use a court, or can they use the, the sign the electoral register again? Because if you sign and send the electoral register back, then you're going over to their side. It's even more subtle than that what goes on, and you're right. You're absolutely right, they can. Uh, because what they'll try and do is this, in a simple vein, they'll say, well, hang on, you gave me your, 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 your driving licence. Uh, you know, it's, it's Mr, so you obviously must be Mr, here's your driving licence. 
Yes, so what? That's my choice. There was a, a I can drive commercially with that license because that's all it's for. The only reason you need a driving license in the United Kingdom is if you're working commercially. So how do they do you for statutes? Oh, you're back to being a civilian working for the Crown Corporation. And it's, they, unless you tell them otherwise, they will do you under that. They will do you as a civilian. Under your title, and you're bugging again. You've got no rights. You're right with the electoral register, which is why I'm not on it. No, I don't need anybody to speak for me. Uh, and neither do you. Can you get off it once you're on it? Yeah. yeah, you just don't renew it. Why do you think they have to send it every time? Yeah. Yeah. Like TV licenses? Right. Uh, yeah, I don't have one of those. I don't have any television. You either. could write to them and tell them you're leaving the country as well. It has to be removed. Uh, good point. But back to back to what I say. What you say about the electoral register? If you're on the electoral register, you've signed away all rights. Yeah. I told you that. So I'm not on the electoral register. They'll come out with threatening letters like, "Ooh, thousand pound fine," and you know. Well, particularly under the armpits and stuff. Uh, fuck them. You just say, I'm sorry, I'm not contracting with you. I don't wish to contract with you. Bugger off. You have what happens to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. Of course you do. But, you know, you can refuse contracts. Why do you think when you get um, summonses for speeding offences, they're conditional offers? Well, an offer can be refused. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm terribly sorry. You're assuming, again, that I'm working under my legal title. I'm not. The fact that I have a driving license on me means I have the right to operate under my legal title, but they assume that you are. You have to tell them you're not. And it can be as simple as this. If you stop by coppers and they say, yeah, here, what's your name? I'll just go Roger Walker. Oh, you're Mr. Roger Walker? No, I don't have a title. You put a title on there and that's fraudulent contract. I won't sign it. But if they can't put a title on, it doesn't mean anything if you sign it, so they've got to get the title. Um, you then say, they'll say, all right, I'll ask you a few questions. And ask, say, I'm sorry, am I obliged to answer your questions? The answer is no. They are beneath you. Why? They are a public servant. Oh, is that right that if you sign something and put brackets around it, it's invisible? I've seen this mentioned. I know what you're saying. I don't know if it makes it invisible. The four corner rule is different. The four corner rule means it's a separate piece of paper. So if you look at your birth certificate, it's all boxes everywhere. Right? It's, here, it's a box for this, the box for that, box for that. That's like having lots of pieces of paper one after the other. That they, and they do it to take out what they want from wherever they want. It's like, it's like one document, that's a sub-document, but you don't know it is when you, when you get it. That's what the four corner rules is. It's a separate piece of paper. So you'll have, you know, something written that will be a box in it, uh, and it means everything outside is changeable, but everything inside isn't. That's, that's my understanding. I'll have to be corrected if somebody wants to go over. I, I, so I saw it, and it said that if you're under duress and you sign it and put brackets around it, it, it doesn't actually count Oh, you signed it. If the police are asking you to sign a document, do it like this. You don't have to sign it. You don't have to sign it, but if you're here, you know, if they're going to beat the crap yeah, out of you. If they start just... to get aggressive and you don't want them, yeah. no. you don't have to sign it. The trouble is, if you can be in a situation where you can be in any situation, you're out you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got two airy coppers threatening to beat the crap out of you, <laughs> you don't want to go into This that is what you do. If they want you to sign it, do it. But what you do first is sign <coughs> under duress. duress. Put a line, put a line. Do that and then sign it and hand it straight back to them. There's nothing they can do with that. And they'll give you, I'll give you another one, another one. And they'll go, oh, fuck you, we're taking you off to prison and the rest of it. And you think, why don't we get through all this? Why do I have to go through all this? There must be a way of turning this off. Yes, there is. Let's pop back to here a bit and remember what was going on. And the law has plausible deniability built into it. When you're going in as a freeman, you are the executor and beneficiary of the equitable half of that equation. They then become the trustee because you judge and magistrate again and they're public servants and you try and call them that and watch what happens to their faces. They don't like that. Are you a public servant? Because <laughs> if you're not, you're working for them and that's not a fair trial because you're actually working for them. And again, we caught the judge on Monday. Uh, I was helping a guy called Oliver. He was asked a question. Uh, and I, I'd become his Mackenzie friend by then, so I was just pumping him full of stuff to ask. And happily, Oliver's a quick learner, so he went with it. Uh, and we'd, we'd prepped him before all this. 
the judge asked him a question and he considered it and I went to look for some, some law to actually give him on that and the judge said I'll take that as a no and I said no you won't, you'll give him time to answer the question so no I won't agree, he's going to give him all the time, what a fair trial? in other words um, he was actually trying to force an answer on him to the benefit of the other side and that's the stuff we look for in a court you'll lose the case, go to appeal, you'll lose that you go to a judicial review, and I'll show you how to do all this in a minute, you'll get it overturned. Because a judicial review says, was it done properly? And if they miss any steps, then you can point those steps out. And that's what we do, we collect them, like falling out of the air, or I've found, or I've found. And many, many thanks to the people that have come to the court cases with, with us here. A lot of you in the room, show you others. Uh, because what we have is a bunch of witnesses at the back, all of whom are taking notes. And when a court is policed, they don't like it. They don't like courts being police. So we go in mob handed and make sure that what happens between the court cases, and bless them, they've done it, they'll submit statements of what went on in the courtroom saying the judge did this and the judge did that, and, and we just go, ha! We're going to bring a case against you because we've got all this. And if we can't, we can always get a judicial review because we've got all the evidence to prove it wasn't done properly. Everything gets overturned at that point. The court is not the last place where everything stops by any means. Um, I'll stand back from that in a minute. Anyone want to ask anything about that sort of relationship and this triumvirate thing that's going on? Because that's essentially what's happening. They think they're an executor for a beneficiary. They're both the crown, they're the same organisation. And you're the one that gets told what to do. Oh, sorry. Does that work for the NHS Trust? NHS All trust. trust law is the same. In, in trust law, you will find an executor, a beneficiary, and a trustee, without exception. And there has to be the three parties. Because when any asset is split in two, in the way that you are when you're born, trust law comes into play. And it's all Roman law. You have the Catholic Church to thank for this. All of it. It's Oleron law. It comes from the Unified Commercial Code in 435 AD. It's probably the first international trade agreement that was ever erected. It's still used to this day by everybody. If that's the case, why do they keep bringing up new laws and statutes, etc.? To rape us. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair thought of 176 new ways of taking money off us. And he's just found a good way of saving paying tax at Barcelona. Ah, sort of oh, but he's also been found guilty of war crimes by the yeah, Indonesian yeah. High Court. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that sets an international president, by the way. And so is Bush. Yeah. That sets an international yeah. president. Yeah. Well, somebody tried to arrest Kissinger at, the, at Davos in Switzerland. He was an MP, he was a Swiss MP, and his own police stopped him. Why did he give us freedom of information? Uh, ah, he also <laughs> write, he wrote an article on that and said it was the worst thing he ever did. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, there's a way around freedom of information. We, we've got a, or I set up a Freedom of Information Act for a single parent mother that I think some of you know about here. She was sent a charge certificate for £150 for a parking fine that was two and a half years old that she paid, kept all the paperwork and receipts. Oh dear. That's fraud. And we're currently going to remove the head of Birmingham City Parking Services from his permission for committing fraud. I put Freedom of Information Act in through my councillor because he's a lawyer, so I pointed out the articles of law that this son of a bitch had broken. And I said, I think it's about time the um, incestuous Catholic scum in our city that has been living off the people here actually works for us. We're not a cash cow for you to farm with statues. <laughs> and I bet somebody in, that, uh, in Birmingham City Council has gone through their databases and they've gone, well, we won't send them out to anybody with a, who paid by credit card or a cheque because the bank can prove that for you, right? Uh, so we'll do it with cash because that's the hardest thing to prove you've paid unless you get the receipts. And this woman tore the sheet up, and she was halfway through, and something <laughs> said, don't throw it away, so she didn't. I didn't know it then. She met me, she got this thing, presented it to me, and I just went... <laughs> <laughs> and now we're persecuting him in the same way he persecutes the city of Birmingham. We are not here to be fed off by them. They are the trustee. We are the executor and beneficiary. And don't you forget it. And if you can find anything like that, like, you, let people know that this is what they're doing. Because the Freedom of Information Act I put in is for two to six years, because that's how long you can push a statute. You can go and chase a statute up to six years old. So what I say is, right, I want all the charge notices that have gone out in the last six months 
for parking fines that are two to six years old. Go and get it for me, councillor, because I'm not on the electoral register, so that puts me above him. He's my public sector. I'm on the electoral register. Other way around. No, no, no. I want this position. Um, so they've done that. They've now sent me a letter back. So what are you going to pay? So no, we sent them a notice to uh, discover evidence, and they've got to show it to us in 28 days. Never mind the Freedom of Information Act. There are actually legal documents you can submit to a corporate entity where you can ask for appointment to go to their offices and look at it. And they have to let you do it. Otherwise, they're in breach of statute. And if they're a government employee, all statutes apply. The moment they're in breach of statute, you can sue them. So we're suing them for criminal fraud. Uh, it may actually result in me, at some point, putting Birmingham City Council into receivership. Is that, is that 2006 fraud act? Uh, it probably will be, yes. Well, fraud is basically taking money by the And we've got it. We, she's paid it, and they're saying she hasn't. Well, they both can't be right. So how did they know that the parking ticket existed to send a child certificate? Somebody's gone through that database and gone, right, we'll hit everyone who's paid with cash. Let's think, how can we guarantee this? I know we'll have immigrants, single parent mothers, uh, who are all on benefits because they'll ship themselves. And that's what they're doing. So he's dead. Um, back to this. This is basically like you want to be, you, not, you want to always be this. Nothing but that, ever. And there's a way of doing it. You guys sent to me, uh, signed for me a while ago, a document. Okay, so I'll show Rog versus Ministry of Justice. Uh, no. <laughs> First one. Oh! <laughs> Sorry about that. It's him, I'll just get rid of you man here. That's uh, another. Hey. Bye. <laughs> right. Uh, this is an affidavit. Now, to explain what an affidavit is, an affidavit is a very difficult document to come up with, not because it's difficult to write but because it's difficult to write what you need to write. The first part here uh, is all legal bullshit, blah, 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 and you're basically saying that you're not any of these. Uh, the United Kingdom is a corporation that operates in bankruptcy. Roger Walker is a presumptive legal fiction operating <coughs> as a trust that operates in bankruptcy. The affiant is not a United Kingdom citizen, subject, vessel, or person, or any all-legist artificial entity. I'm in Great Britain. The United Kingdom is a PLC, so currently run by David Cameron. So you put all that, you've got the respondent, Lord Chief Justice Judge, Ministry of Justice, he's head of the Ministry of Justice at the moment, and this is my affidavit, I have uh, no shame whatsoever in making this oath. I write this affidavit from a place of complete wholeness and humility, guided by the divine love of God for the benefit of others who know not why they are in this realm. I attest to my truth being knowledge of the divine bestowed upon me by the Father that we are all equal in his sight, existing in his universe in a state of profound equanimity and equality bound to all that is through the unconditional love, light and the divine wisdom of his still silent and yet eminent consciousness. I attest to the last will and testament of God, that's the Bible, uh, as a beneficiary of the divine gift of God, this realm to both enjoy and share its abundance and to keep the peace as directed by God for the benefit of all his creation. I will uphold the law and the lively oracles of God in maintaining the rights of others as if myself, their freedom to roam and discover without hindrance to their being in any way whatsoever. Nor shall I cause my fellow loss of either employment or their possessions, or indeed any physical artefacts that make their life whole, either by theft or destruction. The above truth I hold and practice day clearly on a daily basis. You have to write something that comes from the deepest part inside you. If you haven't got anything you're prepared to die for, then there's no point in being here as far as I'm concerned. What's an affidavit? The affidavit is an attestation of truth. An affidavit is a document that can only be written by a man or a woman. A corporation cannot write an affidavit. They can write a statement of truth, but an affidavit trumps it if you go and get it authenticated by a notary. 
Let me just explain actually what the, what the hierarchy of the legal system is, and things might become a bit more obvious. Who do you think is head of the legal system in the country? Queen. Well, no? mm. Who's next? After the Queen. Yeah. Chief Justice. Uh, no, the uh, Bishop? Oh, yeah, Archbishop of Canterbury. I was trying to think of his name. What's his name? John. John. <laughs> <laughs> He's even got his own mail, hasn't he? Bishop, Bishop. No, remember titles? There's yeah, a title. Archbishop of Canterbury, it's a title. And he occasionally becomes head of the legal system because he has to bestow the divine right on the monarch to become the monarch. <coughs> and because of that, underneath the Archbishop of Canterbury, we then have an animal called a notary. Okay? And a notary is a Catholic appointment, which leads one to wonder what a Protestant Archbishop is doing appointing Catholics. Um, because a notary was originally the individual who took the confessions down of the Spanish Inquisition. In other words, when they were torturing them, it was his job to write down what they said. For real. <laughs> and they're still in this country. But this country, surely, is a Protestant country because this, this queen here is head of the church and the legal system. Isn't she? Church. Yes, but it's a Protestant country in law. And the 1689 Bill of Rights Act, get a copy of that, get, get a copy of that off the internet and keep it. In, uh, the 1689 Bill of Rights Act came in after, get ready for this, every single magistrate, judge and minister of state who was a Catholic was hung. And they were all hung for treason. And that law came in to protect Protestants from papacy. It failed. That's the scam. You're being run by the Vatican, whether you like it or not. So, and to become a notary, you have to be a, a lawyer, and you go up to a special ecclesiastical court, and you go down on one knee, and you pledge to the Archbishop of Canterbury that you will uphold the truth of the law, regardless of the parties involved. So if you go with a legal truth and he signs it, the only people who can overturn it in the country are these two. Because under them are the judges. <laughs> of any level, uh, magistrates, <coughs> including stipendiary magistrates, then you've got, uh, let's think of them, uh, barristers, barristers, solicitors, uh, clerks, and so on. Um, so the idea of, of, of this affidavit was it was sent off to the Ministry of Justice along with this. It, this is the pack, uh, Claim of Right, Ministry of Justice. Sorry about that. Um, right. These, what you've got to do is ask questions backwards. So look at this one. I demand you state with proof and in writing within 28 days what's right. I, Roger Stewart of the House of Walker, although the case, have lost as a man in this realm when they were lost and why in relation to the Ministry of Justice or Caron Corporation. In other words, I'm saying you proved to me I've lost any rights. Not claiming rights back as if I've lost them. I'm saying, you know, you tell me what I've lost. I'll do it the other way around. So it's a presumption you've got those rights. Yeah, but I'm asking them to disprove it. Yeah, that's why. And they can't. can't. That's why I'm asking them. Um, you, you ask questions they can't answer, or they don't want to. Um, I demand you state with proof of your writing when, if ever, Roger Stewart of the House of Walker became an employee of the Crown Corporation, either by way of contracts or timesheets, and the remuneration owed if ever employed by the Crown Corporation. Uh, also, if and when full disclosure was given of any commercial attachment to the Ministry of Justice and or Crown Corporation. So I'm basically saying, you prove to me I'm not still the equitable title. And they can't. So you give them a period of time to do that. Now, claim of right, let's go say, oh, I am free, you know, I've asked them these questions and they agreed I'm right. Continue to penalty structure. Penalty for breach of any and all rights. Cop a load of this. For any and every breach of inalienable human rights as a man in this realm by anyone from the Crown Corporation, from the police upwards, it's a thousand pounds an event. That's my contract with them, because I'm the executor and beneficiary, so I write the fucking contracts. Uh, for any and every breach of inalienable human rights as a man in this realm that causes physical damage, three months imprisonment and financial cover for immediate private medical treatment to effect reparations. And it goes on. Uh, this, uh, it also includes uh, inalienable, there's inalienable, 
um, uh, for amputation or other dismemberment, five years imprisonment, financial cover for immediate private medical treatment, to effect reparations and financial cover for loss of income for as long as is required to maintain my quality of life. That could be forever. Uh, and if they actually, you know, uh, here we are, we've got biological injection, electronic injection, 10 years imprisonment and some of no less than a quarter of a million. Uh, these are reckon are worth that. Um, then if they uh, try and hold me, and this is what you've got to do when you write this shit, is you've got to write them out of it. I'll show you how. For it's subordinate parts, any of the officers, third parties, currently appointed as yet appointed, no, 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 so there is an officers. Detainment or confinement being defined as the removal of inalienable freedoms by containment or confinement within a vehicle or building that Roger of the House of Walker is not allowed to leave of his own free will by whatsoever term is used to describe the building or vehicle. Because if you say, um, you know, if you put me in prison, they'll go, no, no, it's not a prison. It's a detention centre. <laughs> oh, shit! So what you do is you, 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 you do what lawyers do. You describe it in such hugely vague terms that whatever the building is, whatever whatever it is, they're breaching your contract. Yeah. So you write them out of every possibility of holding you. Um, and it goes on. Uh, well, lots of stuff there. Uh, breach of valuable rights to do with uh, travelling, loss of travel, loss of dwelling, loss from property, any breach of uh, forced dwelling, uh, any breach of lies, interceding in financial instruments, in other words, trying to get money out of my bank, or anything of that ilk, and they have agreed they have agreed. What did that say there about Mr. Roger? Ah, look at it. Look at it carefully. Yeah, like else, it? Yes. You want the Mr. Yeah, bit? Yeah, no. Okay. The penalty structure is for and on behalf of the man and living being, Roger Stewart of the House of Walker, who is both executor and beneficiary in all legal circumstances for that. Yeah. You want me to come into court and talk about that? That's the capacity I come in as. Got that? So there we go. We're back to square one. I've managed to do it. I've agreed, and they've agreed, that whenever I enter the court, I'm this. So they're always this, which means they've got to look after me. But that's jumping ahead of the game and saying, you want to come and get me, you'll pay for it. Big time when you pay for it. I'm not going to be mucked around with by some pathological two-digit IQ retard in a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> they're not negotiable, and they're renewed every 4th of April. Uh, in line with inflation. And I might add some more. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, I get very crazy. So that is essentially it. What you've got to do if you want to go for it is come up with an affidavit. Now when you go on the internet and research this, usually the first page you can hive off because it's all the legal bullshit about I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not in this country, I'm not this, I'm not this. You say I'm not any of this, but in a legal way. And then you come out with your truth. What you really believe deep inside yourself. <laughs> And if it's true for you, that's good enough for me. When you've done that, send in your claim of right. You're saying, you know, you prove to me I've lost any. And if you've lost none and you want to take them away, these are my fees. But by doing it preemptively as a contractual association, I've got a contract with them that says, okay, you want to come and muck around with me. Uh, sorry, that's 1250 for taking me to prison. Uh, you actually twisted my arm, there's another grand. Um, we were in there for four hours, that's another four grand. Uh, if you keep me for three days, by the way, it's 50,000 quid immediately. Do you know why? In America, if they hold prisoners for three days, the IMF pay them $80,000. It's a profit-making scheme. It's all about money, isn't it, really? Let's go on from this to something about that somebody mentioned earlier. Uh, and this is another cornerstone of law. Uh, we'll get, get uh, everyone's happy with this. The idea is if you write this shit and you go up and see this guy and he signs it, you walk into court and all you've got to do is have that notary's note and the moment you go in you go, sorry, it all stops now. When you walk into a court with a notary's note, it's like he's walking with you in the hand and he's the highest officer of the court at that moment and if anybody does anything in that courtroom, they're in contempt of court, even the judge. Because the judge is subordinate to the notary, the only individual that can ever turn. It's clearly the Archbishop of Canterbury. Sorry, yes? I was going to leave this for the end of the break, but um, talking on behalf of people that don't know what the freedom of movement is and don't know why you're doing it, okay. um, it's kind of gone a bit beyond where, where I'm at. Um, am I right in saying that this is about anger that 
It's the anger that the law is making assumptions about all of us that they can do what they can do to us. So where's this anger? What has happened in order to make this so important? What specific things are you fighting? Rather than saying, okay, the law is mistreating us, police mistreating us. For those of us that are not, haven't been in that situation, we'll be a little bit confused why this is so important. Do you want me to rewind it? Can you rewind and say why this is so important? Okay. This, uh, basically, you've got two choices. You can either be persecuted by the Ministry of Justice and all its agents till the rest of your life, or not. In what kind of things? Uh, parking fines, speeding offences, anything to do with statutes. Anything where you're addressed as Mrs. Capital Letters. So if I speed, I, I, I knew I shouldn't have sped. Why? So what, well, because it's dangerous. I could have knocked someone over. So yeah, but I can go at 90 miles an hour on the M1. I mean, it's not dangerous to me. I've, I've raced bikes at over 180 miles an hour. Danger is relative. But the car so isn't dangerous, it's the I've person who's dangerous. I've done but now, I've, I've you can't be we, trying we can to prosecute for oh, something no, that might have happened though. Sorry, yes. sorry, because we, yeah. so we've got these different... But it's, it's, it's more I'm relevant if we look at the paradigm of, say, going one penny overdrawn for one day in the bank, and they charge you 25 quid, and then you say, that that's a little unfair, because I lent you all my money mm -hmm. for nothing, okay. and now you've come in... Kick me, and then when you don't pay for a while, you charge another 25 quid. So that's m more of a relevant paradigm to some people, where then people like Roger will say, I could help you with that, and he, mm. he has done it. But if he just writes one letter in their terms, and they go, well, I do apologise. <laughs> but if you don't argue it, they will take it. You see, and that's why people of, are starting to... Sorry, Andy, sorry. the key thing of the, legal, of the legal side is the legal side is nothing but statutes. Statutes are rules you have to obey if you have a title. And with Mr. or Mrs., you're a civilian. You're the lowest of the low. No, 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 no. You put the equitable title and suddenly it all does that. And you're up with the Queen and their public service. If you're a civilian, they operate on you. If you're a sovereign, they operate for you. Does that make sense? So it's a way of making sure that you're listening to. It's a way of making sure they don't interfere with you. See, maybe she needs to understand the term between legal and lawful. Good point. Sorry, I, this guy has been very patient. Can I just ask his question? He's, he's asked, he's been waiting for mentioned in your affidavit a lot of stuff to do with God. And I've been looking at stuff recently talking of God's law and becoming before common law. So with that question there, isn't it more to do with as long as it's not harming anyone else? Correct. Let's do that. Because the, 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 the lady at the back, I'm, I'm, I'm losing people. Let's back to back. There must be enough points to do that. In, in, the, in the split at the start when you're born, you've got statutes over here and common law. Remember this? Common law. What's common law? That can be summed up in three sentences. One, cause no harm. Two, cause no loss by theft or destruction. Three, there's nobody greater than you than God. That's it. Statutory law, my God, there's tens of thousands of those. But those are rules of a society. Anyone here a member of any societies? No. no. So why do they keep calling a benefit of society? Well, we're working for the benefit of society. That's right. That one, the law society, that's who they're working to the benefit. Because we're not a society. We're the people. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's who they're working for. And when they say, well, you know, we've got to look after your security. That's not safety. <laughs> That's your worth. Security and Exchange Commission. That's what they mean. How valuable you are to them. You're a slave. You work for them. And the way they get you is this. Anybody employed in any, any company at the minute? Right, uh, uh, you'll yeah, know the answer anyway, I want to take someone else. Has anyone signed a copy? Uh, you'll know the answer to me. <laughs> I want somebody to say, oh yeah, go on. Um, you, you work for IBM, don't you, Craig? Yeah. Do you remember when you started work with IBM, you went into what part, what department? Yeah. You went into the person L department. Yeah. And in that personnel department, you filled in a form. Yeah. And you yeah. filled it in with this <laughs> title, and capital letters. In other words, at that moment, he agreed to work as an agent of the Crown Corporation for that company. 
So what he has to pay is their cut, and that's called tax. If you work on this side, you don't pay any tax at all. This is the equitable side. <laughs> Go on. Right, good thing. <laughs> Fair play. Tax is voluntary. Is tax no, is voluntary. There is no law saying that you have to pay tax. Absolutely, not one. It's voluntary, but what it is, it's all done by coercement without you knowing that this is happening. There's two of you. And the, everybody assumes that this is all there is. The, the, you know, the sons of God, if you like, vanished off the face of the earth. They all became legal documents. Who was it who said the bigger the lie is, the, the more the money uh, oh, yeah. It's, um, it's the, big, the big lies nobody would believe. The small lies, those are the difficult ones to hide. That's the one. So when you go to a personality this way. Just going back to the clash of writing after dying. Who do you send those documents to? Right, good point. Um, claim of right affidavit, if you really want to blitz this, <laughs> you send the claim of right affidavit to head of the Ministry of Justice, who ever happened to be at the time, happens to be Lord Chief Justice Judge. When that's gone through and been notarised, inform the Attorney General, the uh, Lord Chief Justice is already, uh, the Home Secretary, and anyone that's to do with managing law, anyone and everyone, you can't mail it to enough people. Because what you're doing is giving full disclosure. You're saying, I've got this on the go, uh, government. Don't forget, I've got this on the go. And I'm going to send it to every single chief constable in the country to inform his officers that because they're under full commercial liability, if they fuck with me, I'll take everything they've got off them. And I have that right. They have full commercial liability. In California now, the uh, police forces there that are managed, they are actually telling their coppers to put all their affairs, to, to actually, uh, what's the word, convey, to convey all their property to their wives. Because if anyone comes after them and sues them, they've got nothing they can put a lien against. So they're actually protecting their police officers by saying, you give everything to your wife, sign it all over to your wife. And the beauty of that is, if you don't sue them and the wife doesn't like them, what do they end up with? The divorce. <laughs> nothing! That's the game you all want. So that's it. Basically, you're going to think of prostitute and pimp. And I go over here, you know, and I put Mister. I'm going to do my work over here. And here I am, the prostitute, doing my work, and I've earned hundred quid for doing my work. And I go over here, and the pimp, the pimp comes over and goes, "No, no, you're working as our prostitute, mate. We'll take 25, 40 percent of national insurance for your this, okay? Yeah. Because you've agreed by signing the documents of the personnel department that you would work as an agent of the government." Because you put Mr, Mrs, Dr, Miss down. Let's talk about Master. William. <coughs> Lord William Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. That is uh, not a joke. I'll just show you why. Well, it's bad. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no touching him. <laughs> I found this a while ago, and I, I sent it to Bill for a giggle. I said, do you realise you can actually buy a freaking title? And uh, it was 60 quid. So I went, I'll bloody do it then. Um, so he sent it off. We've got all the paperwork here, and this is what allows you to do. This is what you get for your 50 quid for 10 square foot of a bit of land in Scotland. Right? The title of Laird, Lord, or Lady of La Chama. He's Lord William Jeff. <laughs> a high quality full colour gift containing all your documents. Couldn't give a shit about that. This is the bit we wanted. Master title deed to change your title on bank accounts, driving licenses, and other ID. <laughs> That's legal. Not lawful, legal. Over here. Excellent. Fucking brilliant. This is, a, this is a deed of change of name and title deed. It's, it's a deed poll of William Jefferson, now Lord William Jefferson. He has the titles. right to camp and wander on the estate and be free for the rest of his life. 
What, all 10 square feet, yeah? <laughs> you can go anywhere on it. Oh. You have, that's your 10 foot square, but you can go, you're allowed to go anywhere on the estate. Well, would you want to go there? <laughs> Why not? It's I do Scotland. have the right to shoot anyone if they're poaching my dear. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, and there's my crest. Oh. <laughs> so if any of you peasants would like one. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got your license yet? Have you got your passport yet? No, we've only got it through today. Have you got an A on it? Um, no, I should be sending off for it so as I get my A and, uh, and I should be Lord William Jefferson on my driving license, of which uh, I, I now become master. Yeah, which is the title which, they don't want to hear. They've got no the legal right over it. Lords, like. No, there it doesn't give you the right to sit in the House of Lords now. It's about five grand for that one. But um, <laughs> yes. the thing is, what, what I'd like to say very quickly whilst I'm up here, for, for the young lady at the back, you were saying that it's all a bit advanced for you. The whole idea of us getting together and starting to use the system against the system is they've created the rules. And what they do, unbeknown to you, you are... All the propaganda on television, we, we abide by the rules. I'm not going to drive down. My road is turf green. <laughs> there are seven schools in that road. I won't come down that road at, at uh, 90 miles an hour. But when the schools are all closed and I come down there at 40 <laughs> miles an hour and I can struggle the speed humps, I'm doing no harm. Correct. But the bastards have pulled me in the past <laughs> because... What you've got to remember is police officers, they are there, or supposed to be there, to serve and protect. They're now there to serve and collect. <laughs> they don't serve us, they serve the office. And that's the difference. And what we're fighting against is the fact that they are constantly raping us of every penny that we earn. We tax not only on our income, but everything we buy, everything that we consume, and all, all of the, even the utilities, there's a portion of it is taxed. What the fuck do they want from us, the blood? That's what we're fighting for. Sorry? This enables me to become a master. As regards to what you just said, if you had that, if they formed you now, would that make any difference? Yes, they've got but no legal right to them no at all. So the title doesn't it. exist as the Crown Copyright. You get your birth certificate out and it says Crown Copyright, we own this bit, this is our bit. Yeah. They own that bit. They don't own that bit of that, there is no other bit. That's why Master, or some ludicrous situation where you call yourself, is holding a set of river shape. They can't do anything about it. You can only be a lord if you own a piece of land. Can you join the House of Lords now? No, it doesn't allow you access, but you can do that. I have a, a friend who's a doctor. Uh, well, I say a friend, I, I know a doctor who's as bent as a nine bomb nose. He put, I, I was watching the telly years ago, and I was watching the Parliament Channel where uh, they were in the House of Lords, and I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, that's Dr. Gecky. What's he doing in the House of Lords? So I went to see him, <laughs> it was a sort of professional colleague, said, um, uh, excuse me, I saw something incredibly like you in the House of Lords. He burst out laughing, took out his driving license, and he said, Lord Gatke, he bought for 5,000 quid the right to sit in the House of Lords and change law for everyone in this country. For five grand. He is as bent as a three bolt note. It's a nasty way. <laughs> uh, this is what we've done, by the way, because of trust law. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, of course. What's the female equivalent? Lady. 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 Yeah. Um, you can be master. Um, in the same way that my middle name is Stuart, but my mother's middle name is Stuart as well. And the reason being is I'm a descendant from the Protestant side of the royal family in Scotland. So that, that, that name has come down with me. So in further documents, I've put Roger of the family Walker and Clown Stuart. Because I am. I've got the army title to wear the tongue. Even though it doesn't sound so. <laughs> um, but yes, it doesn't, it's, you can't have sexual discrimination, you see. Remember? So we're all equal, aren't we? I love all of equality. What we did, the four of us, that's Bill, Adrian, uh, and Dave and myself here, we assembled ourselves into a trust of four people, and we've called it the Sanctuary Trust, and we have a care of business address, so nobody knows where we live. 
Uh, and what we do is we run cases and back them into this trust. If, you come, if you're running a case for yourself, you're always writing letters with, I received your letter as an individual person. If you put a trust up, we have received, they then think, my God, how many of them are there? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. It's psychological. It makes them think there's a whole army coming together. There's four of us, but we'll leave them together. And we've, but we've got the rest of the trust. <laughs> and going back to your brackets. The brackets mean information only. It doesn't mean a corporate entity. You put a postcode on your address and you're declaring yourself as a corporate entity. So we put it in brackets just for the convenience. In other words, it's written out of everything else. So we use this as this is our letterhead and we send off uh, legal cases underneath the trust's name. The beauty is it gives you wonderful powers of disclosure. Uh, you can ask, you know, I want to see all this and I want to see all this and I want to see all this and they have to do it. They have to do it. Um, so we're basically having great fun at the minute, so we've all got to pull our own out and see So by doing it this way, it gives us, we have, it, it has come to our attention. Uh, and the trust would lie like to know this, you have 28 days to send us this, otherwise we'll take it to court. And they jump. Uh, and we're just starting to use this, now we've set it up. The four of us have got the trust, and we have a third party um, countersign our association with the trust, because with four of us, what we can do is this. Let's just take one, two, three, four. Four in the trust. Suppose number four has a personal case against them. What we do, that goes into the trust, and someone over here will be the principal executor, and here are the two signatures that will authenticate legal documents. You need three signatures on a legal document to make it a legal document. Oh, it's not a letter, it's a legal document. I'll give you an example of one so you can see one that's probably better there. Ooh, where are we? Case is running, what will do. Oh, let's show you a case of one, because that's more fun. Uh, where is it? Case is closed. Side. This is a single parent mother who I got off a Barclay card debt. Um, uh, at least stop all that'll do. There they are. Uh, that's not very good. Bear with me, sir. Oh, sorry. I need to rip up with that. Nah, Roger Walker, Mr. <coughs> PP. If you do this, when you sign, and you can do it on documents that the police give you. Do you know what that means? PP? Four and on behalf of. Four and on behalf of. And what you're saying is, if, you, if, you, if they've made a, a contract with you as this, the person with no, person with no rights, by the way, person in one of the legal dictionaries has a 34-page definition. Um, so you ask, what, what capacity are you using the word person? Um, that's lost all rights. If you sign for him with this, you're showing there's two individuals. You're over here signing on behalf of this. You're not signing as, you're signing on behalf of. And when I started sending legal documents out with PT on, every document that was sent back to me, they did the same thing. And I can only imagine they did it because I'd done it and they didn't know why I'd done it, so they were going to do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it means a pro parachium. It's actually on behalf of the curate. So you've got straight away religion, law, money and politics are all the same thing. Houses of Parliament is a church, it's got ministers of state. Where else do you get ministers? And it's a corporation. And it's a corporation. And it's a court. It makes law. And the Archbishop <coughs> is involved in this, and the Queen's involved in this. And we don't have a Queen, by the way, you do appreciate that, don't you? We don't have a monarch in this country. No, no, when the, when the, I've got it here somewhere, when the Queen took her oath, she agreed to uphold yeah. the law of God, which is why my affidavit is like hers. I'm saying, yeah, I'm a sovereign too, I'll stick with that, I don't have a problem with the law of God. Not at all. And in uh, Deuteronomy, well, it's either Genesis or Deuteronomy 2.8, it says, you shall neither add nor detract aught from the word of God. So the moment she gave royal assent to a statute, she abdicated the throne. She changed the law of God. She's in breach of contract. We've got a short German Jew called Elizabeth Sachs Coburg Goffer <laughs> <laughs> infesting our, our, our houses. Yeah. That's where she came from originally. <laughs> we're going to have to have a break on that. <laughs>
Um, I'll stop there. I'll stop there and, and let, let some questions go. Tell me something going on. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll ask a few questions. Please, wait, wait. I'm sorry if it is lawful and the. Um... Ah, good point. Good point. Good point. Very good point. What's the difference between lawful and legal? This is all legal. Legal is to do with paperwork and the legal fiction. You with the title, Mr. Mrs. or your name in capital letters. That's the legal stuff. Lawful is your enable rights to travel. You're doing things lawfully. Uh, what you could almost say is over here, criminal, over here, such true. But that's not quite true, but it's pretty close. So look, you can actually have something which is legal but unlawful. Because they can come and get you for statutes, but if you've told them you're not working under your title, and you ask for proof of that, and they can't prove you're working under your title because it's an assumption, then you state categorically you're over here. If they then fine you and send you papers going, you pay this within 21 days or the bailiffs to come down and take the balls off, um, you can say, fuck off, I was over here and I served documents to prove that I am. So that was legal action done by the Ministry of Justice and the courts that itself was unlawful. In other words, they're robbing you. And the thing that Bill highlighted, all courts, all government employees have to, have to, absolutely have to uphold statutes. Statutes are for corporations, of which the UK PLC is one. Now the problem is, you know, if the law is so important, why aren't we taught it from the age of six? They need our ignorance. Why? Because they don't even stick to their own rules. And we on Monday prove that par excellence by railroading a, a judge in his court. We caught him aiding and abetting the prosecution. We caught him lying in court. He asked, he said, I'm not going to listen to you. You have no rights of audience. You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, rights of audience only apply to the law society. I'm not part of the inner sanctum. I'll say what the hell I like, judge. And you have no right to stop me. And I'm not going to do this. Uh, you know, I'll send for security. Send for security. They lay a finger on me. I'll do them for assault. And I told him that I'd got this contract in play. And I said, I'm the highest individual in this pissing court, judge. You don't do anything to me. Nothing. You're beneath me with your title. And he didn't like it at all. And they don't like being told what to do. They, they're not sticking to their own rules. They will break the law with impunity every day of the week. They are raping society every day of the week because we don't know how to stop them. This is how to stop them. Become who you were, not who they want you to be. Know who you are. You're not a legal fiction. And it's, it's the same reason that if you go into any graveyards anywhere in the country, like the Barclay card, you won't find a gravestone in anything other than capital letters. Because the corporation has to die as well as the person. They both have to die at that moment. And if you look at a death certificate, it's the same as a birth certificate. It's just red. That's it. So all, I, 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 yeah, do it for yourself. Go to the churchyard. Try and find a single gravestone that's got anything other than capital letters. Got you from birth to death. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take a break, but I'll just explain how the Catholic Church did this. <laughs> 435 AD, Unified Commercial Code. In 1212 AD, they set up a trust that took all land away. All land was stolen from us. In something like 1318, they took property off us. And in 1666, the Great Fire of London, created the space where the Crown Corporation now exists at the Bank of England. We are at the end of a 300 year Ponzi scheme, ladies and gentlemen, that was a pyramid 13 deep. And if you actually do the maths on that, when you get to the bottom of the pyramid, it's bigger than the population of the planet. They fucked it. 2% early growth looks like this. We're there. Here's the Great Depression in America, just to give you some idea of where we are. The whole of the world's financial system is due to collapse. Absolutely and completely. The only direction left is down. And that's what that's when they took you away and they robbed your soul by giving you a legal title because they'd taken the land and property previously. All of this is in trust and it's held in trust by the Catholic Church. 
The Crown Corporation is essentially a bunch of bankers who liaise with the Catholic Church because all statutory law is Roman law. When they knew they couldn't hold on to it militarily, they said, well, okay, let's all trade like this, and everyone went, all right, then what did they do? They signed, they made a contract with Vatican. Oh, it's called the Roman Empire, then. Um, and they agreed to trade like this. And the moment they got that, it meant that they could control the world financially because they couldn't do it militarily. And they've been doing it ever since. And I think it was you who said, where is he? Uh, nothing has changed since North AD. The Romans still run the world and the Jews are still printing the money. Go on. We've got to give a round of applause. Thank you very much. Roger, come on, Roger. Thank you very much, guys. You may start. <laughs> <laughs> I've no noise in this course! Are you kidding? That's what they do. They do shit like that. What they're after is making you frightened. Let me give you a point of law and how it works. Uh, don't answer this question for me, Your Lordship. Um, <laughs> Am I correct in my understanding, Judge, that all my inalienable rights are intact? I didn't hear a yes. I take your silence as an affirmation of my truth, given that what is not rebutted in law is not denied. I'll give you another chance. I take it all my inalienable rights are intact. Yes or no? They don't want to say yes. They can't say no because it's a lie. So what they do is this. I'm not listening to any of this rubbish! You are! Blah, 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 blah. That's not yes or no, it's just a, a manic half wit going raving because he realises he's losing the plot. Um, so know that, that in law, when you're asked a question, there are three answers. Yes, no, I have sufficient, insufficient knowledge to reply to that. Okay? Now, if you're asking a, 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 a judge a, 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 a question that he doesn't want the yes to, he won't give you the yes, he don't say the no, so he'll make some sort of theatrical boom, because it's all acting, they've all got costumes and whatever, acts acts of parliament. Um, that's what you do, you have to actually force the answer on them by reminding them that in their system, what is not rebutted is not denied, so if they don't say no, it means yes. Got that? So how you ask questions in a court, you've got to phrase them right such that you can jump in with that codicil, such that you establish in front of witnesses who you brought with you that that is the case. Anything else that you, they hate being manoeuvred, because what you're basically doing is backing the judge into a corner over here where he can't get out of, uh, with logic, with law, pin him down with his own rules. The Ministry of Justice, for any of those who think it is, which it is, uh, this is uh, search on company's house, Here's the Ministry of Justice. It's a corporation. My God. And you know who's the head of that corporation? Lord Chief Justice Judge. He's the head of that corporation. And it became a corporation in 1600, just before the fire of London, and everyone was declared lost at sea. That's why you stand in a dock. You're being rebirthed for salvage. That makes sense. <laughs> it's why you stand in a docking court, you're a vessel being rebirthed for salvage. And what we need to talk about now is something hugely important. Contracts. There's two. Oral, which of course isn't worth the paper to trip on. And written. <laughs> and uh, just for fun, let's show you the Queen's. Queen's contract that she took for us. Uh, I'm going to have to, this is buried in the depths of someone, so bear with me a second. The Queen who is this Freddie Mercury? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was definitely a Queen, I think. Uh, it's definitely Betty. <laughs> uh, that's the one. This is what she signed. I solemnly promise and swear to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United States, and uh, South Africa, Pakistan and Ceylon, and of my possessions and other territories to any of them belonging or pertaining according to their respective laws and customs. I will to my power cause law and justice in mercy to be executed in all my judgments. Really? 
Uh, I will, at the utmost of my power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel. That means she can't change anything. The Bible is the last will and testament of God. Have this and look after it. He's the offeror. And you're the receiver. You go, yeah, okay. Thank you very much, God. Um, I'll be a trustee, and it's, I'll be a trustee of your. Be I'll be the beneficiary of your creation as executor, and all the public officials are trustees to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will, to the utmost of my power, maintain in the United Kingdom the Protestant Reformed religion established by law. That means the 1689 Bill of Rights Act is still in play. Catholics cannot judge any Protestant in this country. It's treason. I will, to the utmost of my power, maintain the other, and I will maintain and preserve inviolably the settlement of the Church of England and the doctrine, worship, discipline, and government thereof, and by law established in England. And I will preserve unto the bishops and clergy of England and to the churches their committed to their charge all such rights and privileges as by law do or shall appertain to them uh, or any of them. These things which I have here before promised. I will perform and keep. The moment she gave royal assent to a statute, she abdicated the throne because she broke this part of a contract. What date was that? And she signed it. Uh, it was a coronation. When was a coronation? Anybody know? 53. 53. 53. 53. 53. 53. 53. No, it's 53. She was actually. 53. I'm, I'm, I'm having to yeah, 53. Basically, um, if you watch it, there's a guy called Mordi. Uh, there's two people doing this. One in Canada is challenged to write to be the monarch. And the reason is, the courts can't act on a, of, the courts can't act at all if there is no monarch. They're completely powerless, utterly powerless, except for common law. In other words, you can't go around murdering each other and get away with it. It's probably quite the right thing. Anyway. Um, but in Canada, there's a guy challenging it because he was he put up a DVD about our, our version of 9/11, 9/9, the tubes that were blown up. Yeah. Uh, I have somebody who works. Seven seven, 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 seven. Yeah. I was thinking bonfire night. Five in um, He he put, <laughs> he put up an idea, a, a, a documentary about this, and they tried to prosecute him uh, for terrorism and all sorts of nasty things like that. So he he, he mounted this defence and said, "No, you can't act. There's no monarch. You've got no right to act." And he's right. And there's a guy in Australia who's just won a case when the uh, Prosecution Council handed a statute to the barrister uh, of the defendant, and the barrister just said, well, this hasn't received royal assent. And he just tore it up in front of the court and threw it on the ground. It has no authority whatsoever. And they're going through that in Australia at the moment. They're actually proving that their statutes haven't got royal assent, so none of them are valid in law. None of them, none of them, none of them. Uh, Canada is a corporation, America is a corporation, New Zealand is a corporation, the UK is a corporation, Ceylon is a corporation, they're all corporations. That's why they have Ron Paul going on about the constitution, the American constitution, but over here all the, all the companies, banks and the American government, which is the constitution, they want statutory law. It's why your man, Bush, the first one, said uh, we can see a new world order coming into view. And what he means is, and he said, uh, that will be the, uh, it will be, uh, that will, uh, nations will uphold uh, the law, not the law of the jungle. And what he means is statutory law. He doesn't mean common law. Obama has now given himself all the rights and privileges that Adolf Hitler did before World War II. And, I, and I've, written, I've written to people in America and asked them, what's it like living in the Fourth Reich? And they think I'm mad. <laughs> You know, it's something. It's like holding up a house brick. You know, it's like saying, "Can you see this is a glasses case?" And they go, "No, I can't see that." It's it's so obvious. It's the big lies again. The queen could be hung, couldn't she, for treason? Yeah. Because of the Maastricht Treaty. No, obviously don't know. No, because of the Maastricht Treaty that she signed our sovereignty over to Europe. Yes. So she has actually committed treason. Correct. And yes, treason is still punishable by like death sentence in No, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. Not anymore. But when did it they stop? They changed it. 
Well, oh, because she's because they wanted it. to commit it. Because she signed the Maastricht Treaty. But having said that, if she but if she did it before, sorry, because before they did the change, this is then it. She should be. This is the contract she broke. Therefore, she's not the one. And it's it's a defence worth reading. I say this is really really being run in Australia and Canada. Uh, the our, our tube station. I'll, I'll tell you something. I had a friend some years ago in the gym who worked for Black Ops. Uh, the government, and when this went off, he said, Can I tell you a funny story about the, the tubes? I said, Yeah, got there. He said, There was a crater in one of them, it came up, and you know, the bomb was under, underneath it. It was put there before the train left anyway. Mm. From underneath. Not down from inside. Just a quickie, Roger. Right? If, if, <laughs> if she's not the monarch anymore, can I move into her fucking house? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, it's interesting because I did think about saying, well, if these are public palaces, can I have the two weeks between the second and <laughs> <laughs> um, It's an interesting point, right? That'd be a good one. Time share that side looking in Paris. <laughs> Obviously, the US is, is, is run by the administration. They are in administration, aren't they? We run it. Well, yes. It's, 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 it's administration. Um, let's get back to contracts. Right. What, what is a contract? A contract is, this is what, it's anything, what she did, she took an oath already and said, you know, blah, 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 all this. Then she was offered this contract, then she signed it, that's what back to away as they do. And that's her. And all the contract is, is the writing down of what's said. It's like, Bill, 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 Bill uh, puts fences up, sorry, Lord, Lord Jefferson puts fences up. Uh, and I can say to Bill, um, would you mind, Bill, coming and fencing off the right-hand side of my garden because it's all fallen over? Um, and which will you charge me? Just give me a figure for fun. Uh, grand. A grand, okay. Yeah, I'll get with that. That's being done in front of witnesses who he can bring to court if I don't pay him. I've made an oral contract in front of witnesses, and that's why you always have two coppers going, are you Mr. So-and-so? Because the other one's just checking out, because if they've got two against one, they've won. They're in the morning, the fence. <laughs> <laughs> no. Written contracts, be very, very careful about written contracts because they're likely, especially if you join a company to work and you go to the personnel department because you'll have all these forms to fill in and they will want the title and your name and capital letters. And suddenly, you're an agent of the government. Be careful signing anything like that or writing anything and then doing this underneath it. You've agreed you're this. You've just given away all your rights. So you're an agent of the government because the personnel department made sure that you came in as an agent of the government so that you pay tax to the government as a prostitute and pimp relationship. So a contract is anything written where you sign it. Now, is he here? Sorry, Ron. I was looking at this other video about um, adhesion. Oh, and contracts of adhesion. And how you can go back and correct them, yes. change them. Yeah. We have to go to the court and ask them for documents. What do you actually do once you found the documents that you adhere to? And how do you go about it? Good question. I've never done this. I'd have to see the documents okay, to know what to do it. next. <laughs> um, contracts of adhesion, you can almost get, you can get rid of by the way I'm doing it, by, by declaring... Um, I mean, which contracts have you come across as contracts of adhesion? She was just saying, oh, the they, they whole page is about you, that's how they got you. Yeah. What they, what they do, you see, all, the whole system of admin, you think it starts at the first thing, but every bit of paperwork that's sort of floats in here, it's just paperwork people signing. The moment you sign stuff, you create wealth. You've got the equitable title. Let me explain how this works. Anyone got a mortgage? Mm -hmm. Hello? Do you know who created the money for the mortgage? You did. You created the money to give to them, for them to lend back to you and charge you for it. And they sold it as well. Uh, male, maybe not, doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. But the point being is, your equitable side, this party, <coughs> created the wealth. Then they float our uh, birth certificates on the market. <laughs> I've had it no, all this, the, there no, isn't no. any money associated with it. There isn't 13 million lying around that's yours. <laughs> um, it's bankrupt. <laughs> There's no money there. All this, you know, oh, yeah, it's worth millions, going to no, it doesn't exist, it's all bankrupt. They're completely bankrupt. The whole world's bankrupt. <laughs> there is no equity. You create it all. So the, the ridiculous thing, a mortgage, no, by the way... That's what I mean, so as soon as we're born, we have a birth certificate. That's what I mean. Registry. You don't have to register your children. Yeah, I know you don't have to. But when do you know do what the fine for non-registration is? 
It used to be two, is it 11 now? Yeah. Oh, right, okay, it's got a lot of seeds. <laughs> Inflation. Um, but you can deregister a child before seven years, because when in 16, 1666 they declared everyone lost a seed, um, they gave everyone seven years to, to find out that they weren't, but they didn't tell them that they had been. So how can you say no when you don't know that it's been done? That's fraud. That's um, lack of full disclosure, all sorts of contract stuff. Uh, and you can push that with statutes and police officers. So a contract is any piece of paper that you give authority to and say, I'll, I'll work under these rules. If you give a contract where you've been asked to, to sign for this guy, you've lost all rights completely. And that's what the police will do every single time. Whenever they're filling their little tickets in, they're offering you a contract. And it, sometimes it has a sound. It sounds like this. <laughs> So when they, you know, the police stop you and go, um, can I be name? Uh, yeah, Roger Walker. Uh, oh, that's Mr. Roger Walker. No, it isn't. Sorry, I've no title. You can put master. So, so you're not Mr. Roger Walker. Correct. And they don't want to do that. And if they say, well, I'm going to assume that you are, can you put that down that you're making that assumption? Because that won't stand in court. And if they do force you and they get, you know, they've got some real fights on you, sign it, but all over that document write, Signed under duress. You cannot be forced to write a contract to anybody. It has to be free will and it has to be complete disclosure. In other words, you know all the terms and conditions there. Now, because it's not here, I'm going to tell a story. I'll keep, I'll keep it anonymous because he's. Uh, he did, he, this is a, a gent we know. He went off to do this project with a cinema and he got all these contracts and he signed them and he came running up to me at Truth Deuce about, I don't know, six months ago. Uh, and said, um, oh, got a problem. <laughs> um, they've said that I've got to maintain the building for three and a half years. Uh, and I said, well, well, where's that? He said, it's in the contract. I said, have you signed it? And he said, yes. I said, guess what? <laughs> You've got to maintain the building for three and a half years. You signed it, you pillock. That gave it authority to become. And he didn't read it. Never, ever, ever sign anything without reading it because you give it value the moment you put the man or woman's signature against the legal title. You're stuck. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, <coughs> and that's true of everything. And that's all they're doing. That's why they got these, you know, little powers that they keep hanging out. Oh, yeah, I'll give you a conditional thing. And, oh, I'll give you it on the spot fine. Will you really? How are they going? A uh, mortgage, it means death grip. It's French. <laughs> More um, we're working on that. We're working on that. Um, because again, you created the wealth. Fraudulent contract, it wasn't full disclosed. So, um, no, the ridiculous. I've heard that they didn't ask for the. Uh, the promissorial note back. The original contract? The promissorial note, the original promissorial note, yeah. Uh, some people have, but I've not done that, so I never had to, so I won't pretend that I did. I've not, I've not no, gone no, down that way. But there are means, yeah. I mean, lots of people happily in the community are going off in different directions to sort of things. So there, there is a company that was doing this um, and setting it up, and they had notaries and stuff like that, and they, they set up a mechanism for doing that, and they went through the whole thing, and they would cancel your credit cards and your mortgage and stuff like that. And they were working on turning turning it into a cash value as well at some point. I don't know how far they got with that. Yeah. I will admit I ran away from doing this a lot of you had to you had to stand up and be counted and do the legal thing in court and be prepared to face the consequences. Uh, there, but, is, there, but, is, there is a theory out there and the Sonics have done it anyway. That they've, they've created the money yep. and they've never had the mortgages and they've used that money they've created. That's why they're free. Nice they're free. Nice yeah. 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 <laughs> the IMF allegedly is run by the Knights of Malta, and they're right at the top of all that lot. Um, and ba basically, it's trying to keep a bubble going by putting further financial institutes on top of financial institutes. They're pushing the pyramid upwards. Um, yeah, Freemasons are weird in lots of ways, um, and it's a club. I mean, that's why Kennedy went on about you know in a free and civilized society. Uh, any form of secret society is an abhorrence, blah, blah, blah. That's what he was trying to tell us. Before they, got, before they killed him, they probably got rid of him. Um, he knew what was going on, he wasn't going to know. Because, uh, you know, we, we could digress, but let's not, let's stick on this. Um, or on written contracts. So, you can make them. They tell you, that, oh, the public can't, uh, you know, the public can't take the law into their own hands. Bollocks. 
You can make it. That's what I've done with my contract to the Ministry of Justice. I've made law, I've sent them a contract and said, tell me why this is invalid. And if you don't, then it means it isn't. And because they're a corporate entity, they've got to accept it because I'm coming in as the equitable half of that equation. I'm coming in as the man, not the legal fiction mister. I'm saying, this guy here, a son of God, um, is talking to this corporation and I'm offering you a contract you can't refuse so you can use contracts of adhesion backwards at them. That's essentially what that is. You're stuck with this until you prove otherwise. Can't go anywhere. And one of the tricks with those is that if it's true now, and I put this in my letter, if it's true now, that meant it was true for all time from my birth until I die. Why? That gives me the chance to go back in my life and go, sorry, I had these rights here. What were you doing with this? Right, come back and see you. I'll take that back off you. Right, I'll, get back in. I'll take that off you. It gives you the chance to go backwards in history and get back what you lost by proving from this that you did have those rights at the time, therefore all contracts were fraudulent. Uh, and it's a way of basically recouping, because what we're trying to do in the trust is make money out of the legal system and out of companies who want to put some money in the trust to, because uh, I'm as poor as church mouse anyway, but it's to help other people. So if people come along, we've got some money to do printing and paying for notaries and all that sort of shit. So we want to build a sort of reservoir of cash. And talking about the universe providing, I got a letter uh, about two weeks ago. I'm due to inherit from somebody I've never heard of in my life. Uh, but I know my grandfather. Not in Nigeria, you think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Some, somebody responded to that. Well, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody who actually right. responded to that went over there and they beat the crap out of him, came back and took everything from his house. Mm. Some idiot thought, oh, great. <laughs> okay. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Um, so signatures. Signatures create wealth. Everything. So the, the, the credit card things, I mean, I've got, uh, we, we, they can go from... A lady I did it through, it bounced through on three, disappeared. Bill's got MBNA after him, and we're right up against the stops now. Northampton County Court have committed criminal fraud. We've caught them bound to rights. They've passed that on to Birmingham County Court. We had a conversation with you, Bill. And um, she said, uh, you don't have the right to appeal. <laughs> really? And she sent a letter to the effect that it is a fact that we are contesting it. The first ever document we sent them was a contestation, and they've got it. They're lying on paper. So we're going to ask them to prove that. We're going to give them, what should we give them? Nine days. We'll give them nine days to prove that that fact is true. And if it's, they're lying to us on paper. So Mrs. Pansar, who signed that, has committed to it. So we'll take her out from underneath the title, we'll take her away as the woman, we'll put her in a county court, and we'll take everything she's got off her. Leave her away to me. She has lied to us on paper. So we've got to fit, we've got to bundle together. We've got to submit a document tomorrow uh, of contestation. Uh, we're going to submit a document on the back of that letter, which will stuff them rigid. And then we're going to court on Friday, and we've already told her that if the case goes ahead, everybody in the court will be arrested. What was that for? What did, what did you say? MBA credit card. Uh, we still haven't got a contract. The only way banks or any financial instruments can come and get you for your debts is if they can produce the original contract. Because that's the lawful. Lawful. Legal. 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 Commerce. Commerce is all about, illegal is all about commerce. Hence, the Ministry of Justice is a um, commercial thing. Yeah, essentially. So does it, have, does it have to be the original? Or can it be the yes. Yeah. It has to be the original. It has to be a copy of an original which they can bring to court to show that it was written by man. And do you know what I've got? For other people I've got off credit card debts, they sent me what we would have had uh, had they signed it at the time. Sorry, that's totally inadequate. What you're looking for when you're when you're asking if they've got a contract to validate something is the signature. Let's see if I've got one uh, from uh, uh, one of the cases. So, so you're saying if they take that original and they make a PDF file of it and put it on the computer, that's not the same as... It's a copy of the original. It's a copy of the original. What it's got to have is the authenticating signature. The wet signature. Yeah. Uh, what, it, what it comes down to is uh, on credit cards... Uh, 
Oh yeah, major. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what I did for a guy. This was about seven thousand two hundred quid's worth. Opus and HSBC. So we sent out a letter, and it goes roughly like this. It goes up, it goes roughly like this. Um, right, this is called the Section 77, 78 request of the 1974 Consumer Credit Act. And what this is basically saying in a nutshell is send us the original contract that made these credit cards live. If they can't, if they can't, it's an illegal loan. They can't foreclose on it. So as long as you don't get it, you say, thank you very much, you fail to send it, you send an estoppel. What you've got to do with the legal conversation is ask a question. If nothing comes back, or is not rebutted in law, is not denied, you then send another one saying, well, you haven't said no, so it must be yes. You haven't got it. And we know you haven't got it because we've proven it, you can't send it. And they sent Bill an application form, and they sent us a contract. Northampton County Court prosecuted Bill, found against him, uh, with nobody there, even though we'd sent a letter stating that we've had an entire private side conversation and we still haven't got it. So given that they've made the judgment, could they send us a copy of the contract they had to have to have made the judgment within 14 days? They haven't got it. That's criminal fraud committed by a court. And now that's gone, in fact they bounced it to Kings Lynn and then they brought it back to Birmingham and she admitted on that letter that they've received our notice to discover evidence, in other words, where's the evidence that you have that allowed you to make the judgment, and a notice of appeal. Why is it going to different? I don't understand. Because they're crapping themselves. Do you know how much they're being, because people no, like no, us in this I don't understand, if, if you live in Birmingham, you, you go to a um, no, Northampton, no. Northampton. No. What, what people don't realise is Northampton County Court is not a court. It's not a court. It's a bulk clearing centre. Right. All the parking fines and everything. It's just bump, 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 and that's all they do all day long. Well, it's okay. literally yeah. decided before you can get it. Right? Yeah. Because, oh, okay. basically, the, the, they think that everybody that's, that's acting under the legal title is guilty. Right. Because, stuff. because it's an assumption. Yeah. Because you, yeah, you would go into that, yeah. yeah. Let me go. Uh, I'll try and hide. Yeah. That's not really, that's the case just an office, isn't it? Yeah. Right. I'll try and hide your thingy, Bill. Don't worry, Please. What I'm after is... Ah, oh, notice of appeal. Where are we? County Court. Notice of default. Where's the notice to discover evidence? Uh, the one before the notice of appeal. Ah, there we go. So we sent this uh, notice for claim of evidence. Many thanks for your judgment for claimant, dated the 9th of November 2011, in relation to the above uh, claimant, and, uh, uh, and, and as yet undefined individual in law referred to as Mr. William Jefferson, no date of birth. Having spent a number of months establishing that MBA Europe Bank Limited capital letters have no contract with a credit card allegedly issued to somebody referred to as Mr. William Jefferson, they have consistently failed to produce this contract despite all requests. All MBA Eurobank Limited have surrendered to us is an application form which clearly states at the base of this document to process your credit card application, please put your full name and address in the box above. In other words, it's, it's not a contract. The reverse of this document we received from MBA Eurobank Limited was a completed application form and they consistently failed to send any authorising contract. An authorising contract is a bit of paper with your signature on it. Given that you have made a judgment in favour of MBA Europe Bank Limited, we are going to give you 14 days to surrender the authorised contract that Northampton County Court must have had to make such a judgment. Dun, dun, dun. We, are, we also ask that if all documents have now gone to King's Lynn County Court, that you instruct your colleagues to send a copy of the above, if not now in your possession, otherwise move it to there. Uh, should Northampton County Court fail to produce this contract under the Consumer Credit Act 1974 or Section 778, Crest having been submitted to MBA Bank Europe in line with this act, you will hold the court, we will hold the court as complicit in aiding and abetting a criminal fraud on behalf of MBA Eurobank. We look forward to receiving the document that allows you to make this judgment, as mentioned above, given that MBA Eurobank Limited have consistently failed to send it to us. Should you fail to surrender this required evidence to make such a judgment as complying with the Consumer Credit Act 1974 within the 14 day period, we will bring criminal proceedings against the clerk at Northampton County Court. We will also file a counterclaim against Northampton County Court and MBLA Bank. Yours sincerely, again, witnessed. Okay? They failed to produce it. There is no contract. But I mean, uh, the Northampton County Court committed criminal fraud. If there's no contract with a signature on it, all bets are off because there's no connection commercially between him and them. And if you can prove there's no connection, you can get off anything. No contract, there's no commercial liability. 
And how many credit cards keep the original documents? Happily, almost none of them. In fact, the older the credit card, the better. If it's seven years or more, it tends to go through on the nod. Although, what MBA are a bunch of bastards, and have, when somebody else has talked to me about MBA, funny enough, and they will take it to the max. Sorry, go on. So I was going to say, I used to sell for MBA. Oh, go on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't judge. <laughs> 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 trying to say that the application form is a dual purpose document. Yeah. I can't. It doesn't satisfy that. No, anymore. it's it's not um no, it's it not a contract. Satisfy. No, it doesn't satisfy it's, that. They're trying to say that it is. it's an application form and a contract. You can't have a dual purpose. <coughs> I mean, you know, we used to get a lot of people and I did it for quite a long time, we used to have a lot of people and feel hard for me. You can't believe some people they give me a name, their address, their bank details, their earnings, their mortgage, everything. And you get signed it and they go, is this contract? And you're like, no. And they're like, not signing it, take it off and rip it up quickly. There's quite a lot of people out there who do that. Let, let me let me show how why because they're scared that it's got that. Uh, okay, let, let me show uh, let me show you. There are four things in British law that have to be sold by wet contract. In other words, there has to be a signature on it. And these four things are these: insurance, higher purchase, property, as in as in um, buildings. Houses. Mortgages. Uh, thank you. Mortgages. <laughs> Mortgages. And there's one more. Land? Credit agreements. No, no, no. Insurance, I've purchased mortgages and. Oh, uh, co uh, contracts of. Uh, co uh, uh, contracts of guarantee. Oh, that's right. Guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee also. Uh, yeah. Now, what I mean by contracts of guarantee is when you get a PC world and they go, do you want to take out a five year cover on that? Yeah. Uh, and what they'll do then, they'll have three copies, right? They'll fill it all out, you sign it, they sign it, you get the top copy, they've got the bottom. There are two signatures of both parties on one sheet of paper. Got that? Yeah. Now then, let me explain why that's important for this. Because our trust is suing the head of Admiral. And the reason is, you know, it's confused.com. Yeah. What do you think it is? It's a website to tell you. Who's going to give you the best price? It's elephant. Price anything cars out. Admiral, Admiral own confused.com. Uh, Admiral own. Elephant. Uh, uh, no, no, the, the website's what? It's, it's elephant.com. No, the website. The choice, the insurance website. Elephant. No, it's not. That's one of their insurance companies. Confused. It's confused.com. They own confused.com. We remember we did it on the day because yeah. what we did we went through all the insurance companies, and it's all the same company. There's no choice; it just looks like choice. In other words, the moment you go on that website, they're assuring you whether you like it or not under one of their company names. It's the appearance of choice where there is none. A bit like a general election, really. <laughs> um, now, why do why do I highlight this, and why are we suing out for this? It's confused. It's confused. They are confused. They are confused. EUI Admiral, um, elephant.co.uk, a whole load of other shite as well. It's all the same company. Is that because they're the underwriter of it? Does that make them? No, they own all the companies. They have loads of different trading companies. It's like the credit cards, there are a lot of credit cards. I know. Even though they're advertised to somebody else, they don't. They belong to Barclays. It looks like choice when it isn't. Because they have to do that because there's so few people controlling the world. If you just knew who it was, it'd be fuck all choice. But they make it look like, oh yeah, there's lots of companies all competing with each other. No, they're not. There's lots of companies. They're all the same company. EUI are the mother company, aren't they? 
No, uh, Admiral is the overarching company. Is it Admiral, yeah, that's Admiral. the top one? Now, let me explain what, how insurance works. What insurance is essentially is you're paying somebody out, you're paying somebody else to take the liability, the financial hit if something goes wrong. If my house burns down, they'll rebuild it. If you crash the car, it's your fault, they'll pay the other party. So you're paying a little bit for them to take the financial hit. Got that? Now, we're debating with Admiral, we've got a lot of length and we're ready to go for them now. We're going to give them 14 days again to give him all his money back, or we'll bring criminal proceedings against Alistair Lyons, CBE. And the reason I'm enjoying this is he's also a director of Circo. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a list of directorships about this, too. Uh, basically, he's one of the new Circo, sorry. Circo? Yeah. Circo is the biggest company no one's ever heard of because they don't trade with the general public. Do you know what sort of things they do? They run police, prisons, military. Right. Right. Okay. They are the military industrial complex. Right. Um, so the reason, that, so they, we, we couldn't find a contract. So what we did, we sent, we sent off to Admiral and said, okay, send us the originating contracts because there have to be a, a double signature on the contracts. Didn't have them. Can, can we? I think what you need to do is just explain what actually happened. What actually happened was, uh, can I just very briefly explain? Uh, go on, I was going in a different way. No, the reason, the reason I'm saying yeah, it is yeah. because it shows yeah. how we found out that they got a yeah. monopoly. Yeah. The, the, the thing was, my son insured his car uh, on monthly payments. Right. He went away on holiday, and whilst he was on holiday, overspent, and the bank bounced his monthly payment. So when he came back, they sent him a letter saying that you're in default. We want the whole amount. He's, he was 21. The whole amount was about 1,800 quid. And he hadn't got it. So he's gone, well, I haven't got that, but I can send you the payment. No, we want it all or nothing. So he's panicking now. So he went on to Confuse.com and, and he insured himself with another company called, Ed, it was with the Admiral, and he insured himself with Elephant. They accepted him, but his premium now was £2,400. And what happened was he paid several payments and the Pratt missed another one. <laughs> so he got another letter saying we want the £2,200, da 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 da, for the whole. And he's gone, well, look, I'm ever so sorry, I was out of the country, can I just pay the premium and, and bring it up? No, we want the lot or nothing. So, in the finish, my wife insured him in her name out of her account so no more would bounce and he had to pay her. But in the meantime, they started sending threatening letters because of time on risk and this, that and the other. Um, and for money. So that's when we started to look into it and we found that, number one, because they own the two companies, one, they could have given him a continuance because if it wasn't, if, if it was a bad... Uh, He's either customer. a good or bad customer. Yeah. Why would another part of the company take him on mm -hmm. for more money? Mm -hmm. So it's all bollocks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now we are hitting them and, and Roger's got it all well and truly wrong. Right. They've actually admitted on one of their replies, what they tend to do is they start, they start um, uh, sort of sending confetti and bring on give you loads of paper to do with or you know if they're panicking they'll send you some 300 page document you've got to wade through just to stall you and they sent a five page document and I can't find it on here but in all this it's all this bullshit about the war and this and the other and then right in the middle of page three they actually said there are no contracts so as far as I'm concerned when I was reading that that's the only sentence I'm interested in that bit now let me explain why it has to be wet contracts um, and the reason is this, if they don't have a contract, and suppose you're lucky enough to go and buy an Aston Martin for you know, 70 grand, and you go off to Elephant or Admiral or the same company and go, can you insure me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Tell you what, since it's an Aston, we're going to charge you seven and a half thousand pounds a year fully comp. And you go, yeah, okay. Then. So you, know, you sign and they, they give you an insurance thing back, and uh, off you go, you're insured now. No, you're not has to be insured by wet contracts. So you're actually driving around uninsured unless you've got the wet contract. Okay, but the police are complicit in that because they know you're not insured. But they don't say you're not because otherwise all the insurance companies go bust. And the reason they do this is this. Suppose you prang your Aston Martin. And you go, I'm totally sorry, Admiral. I've just done, you know, 35,000 pounds worth of damage to the left-hand side of my car. And uh, you, you make a claim and they go, no, sorry, we're not paying it. 
And you go, you fucking are, mate, I've been sure of you. And they go, they take you to court. So what they do is what we do. They say, we're terribly sorry, we can't seem to find the contract, our copy. Could you send us a copy of yours? <laughs> you, you don't have one. So what they do in court is they go, we're terribly sorry, it's been a huge administrative cock. I do apologise, Judge. We're quite happy to give you this money back. And then they end up at break even, and you've got a car. And their argument to me that that can't be done is we can't get the two parties in the same place at the same time. So I wrote back to them saying, that's bullshit. You send two copies that you've signed, your customers sign both, and they send one back. Then you're insured. And a mate of mine did this. He took out insurance for his car. He knew all about all this sort of stuff. And uh, it came up to their first payment. And he said, um, uh, the first payment's due in about a week. Uh, I haven't got a contract yet. I said, oh, oh yeah, you have it. He said, no, 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 no. It's one of four things in British law that has to be sold by wet contract because it's a liability. And if you don't give it me, I'm not going to pay you. Because you can't force me to pay you because the contract doesn't exist yet. There is no commercial connection between him and them yet because they haven't sold anything in law. So they were, and they sent it. They sent it. They sent two contracts, they signed, he signed both and sent one back. Now he's insured and he's probably the only person in the country you'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, it is, because uh, the, these things fundamentally have to be sold. You think, if you, if you bought a house, what happens exchange of two contracts for a signature? Yeah, so you, contracts are guaranteed, two signatures, you both get a copy. Mortgages, two signatures, you both get a copy. Insurance, they don't do that because it means they're not holding the liability. They make you liable. So now then, these, these insurance policies, like I took insurance out over the internet. Not valid. So it's not valid. No. But I'm paying monthly. For nothing. Right, so I'll cancel the payment. Yeah. No, no, don't, don't <laughs> dig a hole first. Keep paying because, because then you're in honour. Then ask them for the contracts, just quite simple. So we asked we ask them for the contracts for Bill's son, Ollie, for the, the, the insurance he had with Admiral and the insurance he had with EUI. There are no contracts. And they, they wrote us, oh, we're, we're, we're not discussing this matter any further. As far as we consider the matter's closed. No, it isn't. I sent a section 778 request. Uh, under the 1974 Consumer Credit Act to them to ask for the credit agreements that were made. Because you always have a credit agreement when you buy insurance. So could you send the credit agreements within 14 days? They don't exist either. They don't exist either. And this is the last we're going to say on the matter we're discussing this any further. Uh, well, we are actually. Could you send us the authorization for the standing order? They've got no paperwork on him at all. No contracts, no credit agreements, no authorisation. They've essentially gone into his bank account and helped themselves to their money and sold him nothing. That's called fraudulent practice. Fraudulent practice is knowingly not selling something, and when you've been found out, you don't give the money back. So Alistair Lyons CE <coughs> uh, is having a criminal prosecution brought by our trust because we've got no paperwork. He hasn't sold them anything, but they've stolen money from him. It's theft. So he's got 14 days to pay him back, otherwise he'll go to prison. And what we'll do is I'll put an injunction on his passport, because if he works for Circa, I'm going to make sure he stays in the fucking country. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My credit agreement is done with a tick in a box on the internet. Did it say, if you tick this box, it's You're the agreement to the signature? You're agreeing to terms of contracts, blah, blah, blah. No. 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 Got to look something like that. <laughs> right, right, that's. It, that's the wealth is created by your equitable half. Signing. Nothing signed, nothing created. Where Go on, Bobby. That's a very good point. Um, <laughs> hang on. <coughs> I got it from a government uh, uh, memorandum to government departments. We need to make sure they have updated statutes to cover the internet with these contracts now. Oh, the, uh, uh, Admiral said, oh, we think this is the way forward. And I said to them, what, you're going to ask Cameron to whitewash you so you can do anything you want? No, 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 no. The, 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 the this agreement, it's a contract, it's a, it's a guidance for people who work for government departments who are high up as to what they cannot do in contract law. And it states in that document that those four things must be dealt with that way. Now the government is a, is a PLC. And they're saying it's got to be dealt with that way because they have to abide by the statutes. 
All government people, all people who work for the government have to abide by the statutes. So what they're telling their employees is, if ever you're involved in business with anybody and you're getting insurance, make sure it happens like this. Otherwise, you're not insured. That's where I got it from. Uh, I'm hunting down the rest of the fine print of that in a minute, because this is going to be fun, this one, to take, to take a, somebody who's, uh, yeah, to take somebody who's um, as high up as that and actually bring him into a cause. I'm working on a lot of that, we're such fun with that, we've got nothing. No contracts, no credit agreements, no direct debit mandate, they well, sold. Roger, why in some instances when you offer to pay the premium as a whole lump year up front, do they demand you pay for direct debit, they, they remove the option to pay? Interest. Yes. Well, got yeah. interest on it. Sure. Just, just purely for that, is it? Well, what they've done, you see, he was insured with Admiral first. Yeah. yeah, he was insured with Admiral, so Bill said defaulted. So they said, well, you either pay something or there's a default charge thing, wasn't there? No, no, no. They, well, they said right. that in the terms of the contract, if you miss a payment, mm -hmm. the only way you can remain insured with What them, contract? Exactly. <laughs> the only way you can remain insured with them is if you pay the full premium. Other than that, you're in default. We don't have to insure you. Well, they weren't anyway. Yeah, but what they were trying to do was get the 1,800 right. quid out of him straight away. Absolutely. So, so, so Admiral, Admiral he, default, he defaults with Admiral and he needs some more insurance. Code. So he, he goes back to Admiral's website, confuse.com, thinking he's got choice. <coughs> thinking he's got choice. So he goes to the next one down, which is slightly more expensive, which is elephant.co.uk. And when he rang them up, the, one of the questions they asked him was, have you ever been refused insurance? And he said, no, but I've defaulted, I had to default on an Admiral contract. And they went, oh, that's okay, we'll reinsure you. It's the same company. So he's either a good customer, and they want him, so why didn't they offer him a continuance? Or he's a bad customer, in which case, why would they want to reinsure him? You can't have it both ways, but you can if you're committing fraud. Yeah. So we're going to enjoy that one. But be, notice, if, you're, if you've got insurance, you must have a wet, wet contract. Doesn't a wet contract have to have both parties present at the same time? No. That's the point I made. It doesn't. Their argument was it's impossible to work like that. And I said, no, it isn't. If you're selling, you get two contracts. You sign them both. And I say, a friend of mine's done this. They sent him two of the contracts, signed by one of their party, because their signature takes liability. When they're signing it, they say, yeah, we'll take the hit for you. And you're signing it saying, I'll pay you to take the hit for me. Uh, all our maintenance contracts for computer control systems are done in the way you just described. We sign and we send them off in fact. Yep. So I well, see that every month. Well, no, I But I read something uh, about both parties have to be present when signed, and that needs to go back to the 12th century. Well, yeah, but remember, when you're going into historical law, be careful, it might be superseded. So you're quoting the law, so long about it. And you'll usually see, if you go onto the Ministry of Justice website and get into law, it will usually say, this has, this has replaced section this of this of that law over here. So you go, ah, I've got to be here. I can't be here, I've got to be here. I think it has been changed because of the distances now between uh, businesses and companies. It's like the, the lease that my wife signed for the building. Mm. There are four trustees. Mm. One's in Africa, one's in Switzerland. Uh, so, you know, but everybody had to sign it. Uh, so, uh, I'll kind of take this gentleman first. Sorry, just one quick thing. Yeah. Do you even need insurance if you're not acting as a, as a legal fiction? Of course you do. Why? Why? You're driving down the road, some poor old biddy steps out and you hit her. It's a pure accident, you're never meant to do it. But she now spends the rest of her life in a wheelchair and she's lost a job. I'll take insurance out to make sure that if I'm that bloody stupid, that that person that I've hurt is looked after. That's why I do it. Remember my affidavit? Why would I cause harm? So I'm making sure that if I do, somebody else takes the hit in the liability for it. The financial liability. So yeah, of course I'm going I know, that's another argument. If you're paying national insurance, why do you need anyone from anywhere else? <laughs> We're covered, aren't we? We're paying nationally to be insured. Uh, isn't insurance limited liability, not full liability? Yes. Yeah. All companies are limited liability. Yeah. The only one who's got full liability is the sovereign. You've got, you, you have limitless creation of wealth. Corporations can't. And the police have ultimate liability as well. You can sue them. It's not about this part, but it's got to be a wet contract. Yep. Right, you're saying, where, where do we come back to quote to them to say, like, this is the law? Is it the legal side? Yes. 
and what, what would you quote to them to say that it's got to You'd be? quote the law that states under section this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. subsection yeah. 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 Which one is it that applies this roughly? Do you know? I can't find it. it. Can't find I can't remember it off the top of my head. It's buried in here. It'll take me ages to look for it. I've got that much stuff in here. It's untrue. It's simply so the point I'm trying to make from all this is make sure that you do get what you're buying when it comes to shit like this. Make sure that you do get sold this in law. Because if you don't and your house burns down and they ask you for your half of the contract and you haven't got it, I'm terribly sorry, Judge, we'll give him his money back. They're at break even. They have no liability because they never took the hit for it. They give you the money back. Your house is still both paying. It's a get out clause for them. There's loads of get out clauses. Oh, it's appalling. And would you believe Admiral went from nothing, absolutely nothing in about 1995, to become a billion pound corporation? I mean, the growth curve of this corporation is vertical pretty much. And it's all that all of them are based in Cardiff. Admiral EUI, confused them all. So we have got them and we're going for them. But so surely they've been mischievous in their deeds and contracts, as it says in the Oh, we've got it categorically. Yeah. 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 They, they, they've never got a contract for anything. They've never got a contract for Admiral. There's no credit agreements for either of them. There are no there's no direct debit mandates. Basically, they stole the money and he's got nothing. So that's why we hit them for criminal fraud, for fraud in practice. Not selling something and then not giving the money back, but then we found out not selling. That's fraud in practice. That's the definition of fraud. Thanks, Andy. We've only got five minutes, so if you leave the question. I'll uh, wind down. Uh, <laughs> let's see your, your list. We can just have five minutes of questions. Yeah, uh, go we're going to get kicked out. Which course are you taking? <laughs> Ah, right, there's, there's, there's a good point, actually, the man's made a good point there. Let me give a course hierarchy. Um, a statutory court, <coughs> you want to, you want, the word you want to know is jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. What law is at work in that court? So a statutory court is all about commerce. Well, if people like uh, Alistair Darling, uh, sorry, like uh, the man from Admiral, uh, we can take, we, 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 would, we wouldn't take him to a statutory court. What I'm going to do is take him to the county court. Because this belongs to the Law Society, this belongs to the Queen, it's the Queen's bench. It's back to the fact that you, this is common law, common law, this is statutory law. Two entirely different jurisdictions. So when you're actually a freeman and you've done your affidavit and all the rest of it, and you're being invited to a statutory court for a statutory fine, you inform them that it's the wrong jurisdiction. Therefore, you have no need to attend. And there's nothing they can do about that as long as you've run ahead, got these documents in place, and you can send them through to them. I send them a copy of the notary's estoppel and say, no, I've just made the decision for you. There's nothing you can do. Got that one? Because with your affidavit and your claim of right, you're stating that you can manage legal cases with an affidavit and an estoppel. An affidavit can't come from a corporation. The police cannot submit affidavits. Judges cannot submit affidavits. Anyone who's in a corporate entity cannot submit affidavits. The only one who can submit an affidavit is a man or woman on the equitable side. And that's why it's that powerful. So you need to know where you are. Now, I'll take it quickly, people think when you get a court case against you, you're buggered. What happens is, you go to a statutory court, say you lose, okay? And you think, ah, oh, fuck, I will pay these fines. No, no, you appeal, you go to uh, the county court, suppose you lose that, and you go, ah, oh, shit, what's that? You then go for what's called a judicial review. And what a judicial review is, you're saying to them, I believe this was done completely incorrectly, that the processes required in statutory law weren't adhered to, and here they are. <clears throat> and when they see that, they go, yeah, you're right, it wasn't done properly, and guess what happens? It all goes away. Is that regarding CPR rules or, or state uh, case law and statutes? In what sense? Well, just say you've got an estoppel against somebody and you want to use that as your remedy and they're not going to you and let you have that as your remedy. Why wouldn't they? 
If you've got a notary to stop all, you'd be a judge every time. In other words, it's as if you've taken the notary with you into court. And the moment you hold that up, they all go, <laughs> and you just turn around your bike. That's it. Uh, so, but that's the problem. So what we do when we're running cases is we, we do what they do to us. We barnstorm the judges. We make them make mistakes. We shout at them the way they shout at us. We contradict them. We ask them to challenge it. I wasn't an hired audience on Monday. He was determined he didn't want to speak to me because all the papers we submitted were correct. And he knew somebody was arriving in that court that, who knew what they were doing. And, when, and when, when I got there and I said, do you allow um, Oliver Richards to come into this court with all his inalienable rights intact? And the judge went, huh? Uh, and uh, well, I said, well, it's either a yes or no, judge. And he went, are you a solicitor or a barrister? I went, neither. Well, I'm not going to listen to you. No, yeah, you have to. <laughs> He's given me power of attorney. So I, I'm speaking on his behalf. He goes, no, no, I'm not hearing from you. You're not saying anything, so I'm not listening to you. And he went, no, no, I'm not hearing that. No, 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 no. I said, well, that's just your bloody opinion. Give me the law that says you can tell me to do this. I'm not talking to you. No, no, give me the law. Quote me the law that says you're denying me audience. He never did it. Do you know why? There isn't one. It's back to I can't say yes, you're right, but he can't say no because it's a lie. So he just barnstorms. Fuck off. That's all they do. Because they know they're in the shit. And they're happy to suck and various other people will take note of that and go, the judge never quoted the law that proved that the, uh, the attorney appointed by the defendant didn't have a right to speak. So the judge has, I, I told him, I said, you're breaking, you know, you're committing fraud in your own court. I said, yeah, uh, uh, at some point later on, I said, well, those are my rules. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to cover your ass all ends up. Uh, but that's basically the thing. Don't worry if you're losing court. Immediately uh, ask for an appeal. And what we do during court cases is barnstorm them, so that when we get to here, we've got so much evidence for this, that we couldn't give a shit what happens here. We're going in for fun. We're just having a ball. We're just going, because uh, I, I had a, a notice, uh, I submitted the motion to dismiss the case on grounds of lack of evidence, uh, lack of due process, and perjury. I actually accused the police of lying on the statements. They always, lie. they always lie, don't they? In fact, the statements were a complete copy. The only thing that changed was the first and third person. I said, my colleague said, I did, my colleague did. They were absolutely identical, so this is collusion. I mean, a child of six with word could do a better job than this. Can't you get the staff these days? Uh, and so I went to psychologically imbalanced and emotionally imbalanced. If you can stand still and move the court, and they don't move you, you're winning. <coughs> It's all about motioning the court. It's a ship. Remember the dock? So you have to make motions. You can't say, will you dismiss the case? Because you're just going, no. But if you say motion to dismiss the case with prejudice on these grounds, he's got to consider it. Because you're asking the court to make a decision there and then. And if they don't, you've got them. And we had, we had a ball on Monday, didn't we? It was great fun. <laughs> they had never got a clue what to do. He was threatening them with security. So what for an a judicial review? Yeah, after that. What's after that? Uh, yeah, if you win the judicial review, you then go back here and all the police officers and judges and clerks, you take them out from underneath their title, you bring them into common law. What case was it to do with the, the, the cards, the credit cards? No, no, no. Uh, my case, well, my case was, um, I got accused of two speeding offences in cars that were registered to me that I wasn't driving. And I explained that and took the documentary evidence. They didn't give a fuck. They just wanted the money. But they lost me my license and I lost my job because of it. So I'm going to crucify them. And the reason is when I served my papers, a woman in that court signed for it. And when the case was finished and the judge was there, he went, if you don't, I, I, I said you're committing criminal fraud in your own court. And he said, well, if you don't like it, go and see your MP. So I'm on the election register. I speak for myself. Don't worry, judge. And I held up the receipts. And I said, I've got your staff signing for these papers. He said, I'll sue the arse off them then. And he went, <laughs> left the court, got nowhere to go. So I'll be going for this and I'll get, uh, I'll, uh, the magistrate was superb. I'll just follow you. Ah, there you go. I've got a whole load of stuff here. I've got a bailiff notice to understand me. You can keep bailiffs away, they're a piece of piss. Basically, they don't have a contract with you, so that you're not eligible for their services. And that's what you say to the police, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not under my legal fiction, so I'm not eligible for your services. Not, you, you're not going to fuck with me. I'm not, <laughs> eligible, I'm not eligible for your services. You've got a contract. Okay. 
if I don't pay you because I'm not eligible for your services. Show me a contract that has me eligible for your services and I'll pay for them. Get it? Then with a contract, then you're not eligible for those services. Why are they imposing them on you? Get an answer for them. No contract. But they'll get you to make one as soon as you can because then they've got you. So at the bailiff, you can keep them away. That's a piece of piss. You just say, well, you might have a contract with the court, but you haven't got with me. You come onto this land with, uh, you can actually put a notice on your front gate saying the bailiff's trespass on them is all for pally with. And they've got these off, um, off them. And basically, this bit tells you how to do it. It's a three and a half page document that tells you what all these are for. Basically, you send that one off saying, where's the contract for my credit card I purchase or loan? If it doesn't come back, you send that one off and it says you defaulted. Sorry, uh, you can't come and claim on it. If they come back with anything else, these four are to deal with what sort of replies you might get. So if they say this, send that one. If they come back with this, send that one. If they come back with this one. Uh, you keep going and eventually they'll sort of, they'll threaten. What they do, it's called shouting on paper. That's all legal, most legal here. You know, if you don't pay this, ooh, it's all things I'm here lots of money. Ooh. It's all about fear. Because it's run by the Catholic Church. And they, you know, they, I, I really feel sorry for Catholics. So they've been set a conundrum they can't actually deal with. Thank God I'm an atheist. But this, uh, if you want this, we can find this stuff out. Uh, I don't know the best way of getting to you. Leave that with me, I'll work it out with Andy and other people. But I think we're getting close to being thrown out of the pub, so can I take some more questions if anyone's got me? There's, you've taken on a lot tonight. Congratulations for being yeah. part of the film by me. We need to pack, so. I just want the, um, the reference to work the bills and launch your Yeah, fair with me. I'll give you that. Uh, I won't be able to get these. I won't get the, the site up because we're not online, but I will get the header. Uh, we're going to have to finish and we might have to go around to Roger's house. I'm going to have to go around to Roger's house. I'm going to have to go around to Roger's house. I'm going to have to go around to Roger's house. I'm going to have to go around to Roger's house. Uh, we're not taking that, we've got too much on. We've been, uh, uh, uh,